my band Royal Southern Brotherhood has a record coming out June 10th. It's called Heart, Soul, Blood. And um, we're in New York City doing all kinds of press today and playing different magazines and stuff and stopping by wonderful Gibson NYC, which is one of my favorite hangouts. The last few years I've been rolling with, uh, with a solo project, which is just the Devin Allman Band, and then Royal Southern Brotherhood, which also features uh, Cyril Neville from the Neville Brothers and the Meters. It's got Mike Zito, Charlie Wooten, Yanrico Scott. Yanrico uh, played uh, with Derek Trucks for 15 years. We've been all over the world. Last year we did uh, 23 countries or something crazy like that and did 250 shows. So it's, it really took off and the community responded to it and it's just been a blast, man. It's, um, it's kind of like really where I wanted to end up. You know, when I started my career, I, I was hoping to join forces with something that was, you know, a bigger thing. <laughs> I've only been playing, <clears throat> I was always a rhythm guitar player. And I started playing lead about seven years ago. So I'm way, way, way late in the game. And uh, the first few times that I sat in with Warren and Derek, I was, I was scared shitless. Absolutely. Um, because I admire, you know, where they've taken the guitar. Um, you know, lately, I mean, I, I've done a lot of work. And I guess I just hit a comfort zone, really, more than anything. I'm comfortable with the notes that I play. And I'm comfortable with knowing that I'm the only me, you know, and there's only so many notes you can play out of a guitar, you know, and the rest is just, it's just a mind game, you know, like, like quarterback at the Super Bowl still has to play football, you know, and not think about all the, you know, the crap. So I think, you know, if anything, I've just matured to a point where it's like, I'm not scared, I'm excited, like, I, you know, I want to learn from them, I want to, you know, I want to heat up the stage with them, you know. I didn't grow up in the Allman Brothers world backstage or anything like that. I met my father when I was 17 um, and I got into rock and roll really early. Um, I think when I was 13 I bought a Hendrix record and it had Red House on it and that was the blues and that was my first kind of portal into the blues. And there's something different about it. It was mysterious and spooky and sexy and different you know and it, and it, it was deeper than rock and roll. And that was where you know, my love affair began. Greg Ullman is a name familiar to the baby boomer generation and beyond. Well, now his son, Devin Ullman, is attracting a whole new generation of fans. Radio host Smash, in his first story for State of the Arts, reports that while the second generation rocker pays homage to his father's influence, Devin Ullman is charting his own path to stardom. It's not often you get to see this. Two generations of rock musicians on stage together. Well, I mean, it's important you do your own work. I mean, you know, I know a lot of, you know, second generation rockers and uh, there's a real fine line between kind of paying a little homage to your family and, you know, and, and creating your own thing. And, um, I, I think if you kind of put your nose down and, and work on your songs and your craft and your, your thing and don't worry about that, then you end up for the better. I mean, I've traveled a million miles in vans. You know, my dad didn't ride one of those. You know, he has his own path. I have my own path. It just so happens <clears throat> that we're both almonds. <laughs> Dickie's son, Dwayne Betts, and Barry Oakley Jr., uh, and I have been friends since we were, you know, 15, 16 years old. Um, I think we've always kind of shied away from working together, but now that, uh, you know, we're later on in life, we've, you know, kind of already proven, you know, what we do. Uh, we have talked about joining forces at some point. There's nothing concrete, but we've sat around and played guitars together and said, man, this could be cool to go and do an album and a tour. and. Um, I think it would make a lot of people happy. So, you know, there's no concrete plans yet, but it's definitely being talked about. You got the pit of sign. We'll choose peace over politics. Yeah, man. Um, I actually worked at Guitar Center in St. Louis. 
1999 and 2000, and all my paychecks went to guitars, and it was, uh, it was a really good time. Um, it's actually where I met Mike Zito, who was in uh, Royal Southern Brotherhood with me, and so that relationship dates back quite a bit. Um, but it was fun. It, it was a fun time uh, just playing guitars, and you know, most everybody that worked in the store was, was playing at night. I've been playing Gibson, I've been endorsing since 2007, and my number one is a 59 historic uh, Les Paul custom shop. Um, it's a cherry burst, it's beautiful. Les Paul signed it, and I mean, it's got 2,000 gigs on it now. You know, it's just, it's my number one every, every gig. Um, I got a slew of others, but that one is just really special. I always come back to it.